Instead of trip when we sleeping, he's still working. When you don't even recognize he's working, he's still working. That's just crazy. And I'm so grateful because I know a lot of people that sleep on me. But thank God, he's always here. All right, stand on your feet quickly if you can. Get on your feet. Acts 1, verse 8. I want to pull one part out of this verse. Uh, I love this verse. I, I preached this verse for... Um, for um, Pentecost, when we start working on Pentecost, but I want to grab something else out of this verse. Acts 1 and 8. It says, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witness unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and into the other most parts of the earth. Now, the part we want to grab is, and ye shall be witnesses unto me. And ye shall be witnesses unto me. And word of the Lord is already blessed. Touch the person next to you. Let's pray. Um, I, I worked on this sermon all week. And when I preached it at home, it takes 30 minutes. So we're going to see if it's going to take 30 minutes. That means I'll get out early. Oh, Jesus. All right, let's pray. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to minister your word. I thank you for those that are here. And God, we're going back to the basics, God. Going back to the basics, God, we love you. We thank you for this opportunity. And now, God, there might be somebody that is lost. I pray that your word will touch their heart. Those of us that are born again, Father, prick our hearts so that we can do what you commanded and what you've assigned our hearts to do. Father, now have your way. I submit to your authority. Minister now, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Go on, take a seat right quick. Take a seat. I know all my football fans are excited. Football is back. Even though it's college football, it's still football. High school football is back. Y'all did all right this week? Sean, y'all did all right? Okay. I'm just checking on y'all, making sure everybody did for fine. Uh, congratulations. Lavelle marched in his first halftime show. So at Gramlin State University. And, and Ashton is at uh, what, ETBU. Playing defensive back, so we're excited about them doing it. And, and they tell me my baby back to playing soccer. <laughs> That's a I, she just had to wait. She just had to wait. And uh, 13 days to the wedding, Lord Jesus. Yep. Yeah. Are you gonna be more excited than I am? No, Timothy the one excited. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let me introduce y'all to. I ain't going to say. Bridezilla. Oh. <laughs> anyway, 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 God is good. And, and, and I, I'm, I'm groomzilla, same thing. He just, he just, he just, he a terror. It's going to be all right. Anyway, so we're going back to the basics. We're going back to the basics. And one of the things uh, we want to get back to is witnessing and evangelism. I need to talk a little bit about witnessing and evangelism. And so, um, I, I, I came across this story, and in this story, um, the prosecuting attorney brought the witness to the witness stand, and he said, Mrs. Jones, do you know me? And she said, yeah, I know you, and I'm quite disappointed with your life. You're alcoholic. You don't treat the people in your office right. And everybody in the town gossip about how bad a person you are. Prosecuting attorney turns to the judge, say, I have no more questions <laughs> for Mrs. Jones. <laughs> he sits down. The defense attorney rises. And he said, Mrs. Jones, do you know me? She said, yeah, you know I know you. I was your babysitter. And I have a problem because you are the biggest disappointment that I know. You done divorce your wife, you're alcoholic, and you're just a horrible person. And for me to be your babysitter and the, <laughs> the, 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 the defense attorney to say, I'm sorry, Your Honor, I have no more questions for this witness. And then the, the, the judge bangs his gavel. All in the courtroom. And he calls both attorneys to the stand. And when they come to the stand, he tells them, he said, if y'all ask her, does she know me? 
I'm putting both of y'all in jail tonight. Y'all missed it. Because <laughs> she knew him. She knew him. And so when we talk about witnessing, you can only witness what you know. You can only witness what you know. Now, 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 the word witness in that text is where we get the word martyr for from in the, in, in, in the Greek. It means somebody that's willing to die for what they know. Love and mercy. Somebody willing to die for what they know. But you cannot tell nobody if you don't know. You cannot witness. You can't tell anybody if you don't know. The only people that go to the witness stand is people that are eyewitnesses or people that know a certain situation. I don't want to talk to you about making cake and you ain't never made a cake. I don't want to talk to you about a cake if you only make Duncan Hines. That ain't no cake. Look. You got to work the flour. You got to sift that bad boy. If you don't know, and so a witness is somebody who knows. So Jesus, he stands on the Mount of Olives, and, and, and this is, this is his, his, his departing scene, and that's why we use it for Pentecost, because he's about to leave the earth. This is 40 days after the resurrection, and he says, um, he said, y'all, the 72. It wasn't just the 12. It was, well, it was 11. Well, it was 12, because they, they, didn't, they didn't elected Matthias. But anyway, it wasn't just them. It was the women. It was Mary Magdalene. It was all of those individuals that had been following him. It was the 72 there at the bottom of the mountain. And he says, ye shall be my witnesses. You shall be my testifiers. Tell your neighbor, you can't testify, you can't testify. if you don't know. In other words, you can't tell on me if you don't know about me. So how are you going to tell about Jesus and you don't know him? Amen. A witness is only somebody. So I, I need y'all to establish this. So when he was on the mountain, there were other people there, but only the 72 could be his witness. I want to stop here and ask a question. Can you be a witness? Do you know him as your Lord and Savior? Are you really born again? Are you really saved? See, I don't want, I'm not going to go through that because it's going to take too much time, but I lived my, my whole life as a young adult or a young child in the church, thought I was good and I was not saved. Born again is different from going to church. People go to church. Well, people used to go to church. <laughs> Not people go when they want to go. Uh -huh. But the reality is, are you really born again? Because you cannot testify if you're not born again. So, so, so you, you could talk about what you think. I, I often think about um, the Catholic priests who do marriage counseling. I think about that because how are you going to do marriage counseling and you don't know? You can read the books, but if you ain't in the craziness, you can't tell me about it. You got to be in the crazy. <laughs> Come on, <I'm> twisted. <laughs> Acting all crazy. And then you got to deal with crazy. And then Father, Father Bell comes and says, well, did you try to communicate with him? You can't talk to crazy. <laughs> so he don't really know because he ain't been home when crazy came home. But when you've been home, you know. You know, you know. <laughs> y'all, y'all feeling what I'm saying? So, 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 a witness is one who testifies. So, if you don't know him, you cannot witness. So, basically, what I'm about to say for the next 20, 25 minutes is it can't help you, and this message won't do anything for you if you don't know him, because you can't tell nobody if you don't know him. It's kind of like getting a new boyfriend or girlfriend and going home and telling your friends, I got a new boyfriend, I got a new girlfriend. And they say, girl, tell me about it. 
and she tells you he tall, he light skinned, he dark skinned, he got muscles, and that's about his outside, but she, she don't know him yet. Not till you live with them do you know them. Amen. Lord Jesus. So, so I, I'm, I'm, establishing, I'm establishing the fact that you cannot witness if you do not know him. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. Yeah. You cannot witness Christ if you do not know him. You must be born again. Only born again people can witness Christ. You could talk about what you think. But if you don't know, you have not had a personal experience. When you don't had that experience with him, it is a whole different. That's what people say. You're crazy. Just talk too much about Jesus. You need to talk about something else. Well, I'm born again. That's what I do. I talk about Jesus. People always talk about, I remember, I remember Janelle and Stanley, they came to me. Jeannie, my mama always won't bring stuff back to the Bible. This real life. <laughs> That's what they told me. I was like, well, what you wanted to do? Because the Bible to us is real life. Huh. So if you don't know him, you can't witness him. So 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 I want to talk about witnessing today. I want to talk about one aspect of witnessing, well, a couple of things, but but why should we witness? That's that's the only thing I want to talk about specifically today is why should we witness? Why should we tell people about Jesus Christ? Why, why should we take our time? Now, you got to know him to do it, but why should we do it? Why, why should we do it? Because, you know, people are like, well, uh, I don't like to talk to people about Jesus because uh, I don't want people to think I'm crazy. That's how I used to be. Because, you know, people always talk about Jesus and you, you kind of work on people's nerves. But the thing is, if that's all you know, so a lot of people are uncomfortable. A lot of church people. I was listening um, to Thomas Pastor about, about a month ago, I, I think, and he said something to the effect that 6% of Americans witness that that's saved. Six percent. That's out of a hundred six people witness. Now, this is a problem because there's a reason why we should witness. All right. Let's go to Matthew. Let's go to Matthew 28. Let's start there. Matthew 28. We're going to work. I, I'm almost done. Believe it or not, I'm almost done. But I want to get through these. I got four points. Number one. Why should we witness? Are y'all in Matthew 28, verse 18? And Jesus came and spake unto them. Now remember, this is once again, this is the same Acts 1 and 8. This is a different um, writer about Matthew, about Acts 1. So he's still on the Mount of Olives. It's the same dissertation, but it's a different um, perspective of that set. All right. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, Oh, I was given in heaven and earth. Verse 19. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Ghost, verse 20, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. Amen. I want to grab two things. Go back to verse 19. Verse 19, he says, go ye therefore. Go to verse 20. Verse 20, he says, whatsoever I have commanded you. So this verse, or this couple of verses, teaches us the reason why we should witness is we have been commanded to witness. We call it in the church, I remember, you, man, I don't want to go back to Sunday school. Sunday school was hard, but I remember Sunday school, you know, you learn a lot in Sunday school. In the black church, we taught everything. We taught Robert Rules all in the Sunday school. Y'all don't know nothing about that, huh? I Thomas Keys make a motion that the minutes be received and adopted with necessary correction if there be any. We learned all that in Sunday school. These kids don't know how to make a motion. They don't know how to make a motion. You turn on C C span, they're like, what's happening? We learned that in Sunday. Anyway, I digress. <laughs> 
But we talked about in Sunday school, the Great Commission. The Great Commission, the, the Great Command. Because the commission is what God has commanded us to do. And the reason why we should witness is because we've been commanded to witness. So if you do not witness, you break the command. See, witnessing is not an option. Should I or shouldn't I? It is something that we do. Everywhere I go, I'm in Walmart talking about Jesus. I'm in Lowe's talking about Jesus. So that's, I took her to the store. She said, Daddy, you talk to everybody. Yeah, that's my job. I'm, it's my commission. Not because I'm a preacher. That's what I am. That's why most times I wear my cross out, and most times I have my hat with my cross or Jesus on it so that I can have a, a, a witnessing tool so that I can talk to him. I got all, I have about 50 hats, but I wear the Jesus hat. It's all raggedy. But when people see it, people smile. People that don't like me, they, they see the hat and they go, yeah. let me tell you about Jesus. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, we, we are commanded to, we, we have to do it. He didn't say, if you feel like doing it, witness, it is something that we must do. Repeat after me. Witnessing is something that I must do. So when the last time you witnessed? Okay, wait, wait, let's make it simple. Let's make it simple. Let's go in our house. Who in your house is not saved? If they're not saved, have you witnessed? Okay, let's, take, let's, let's go further. From your house to your family. I know they're going to call you crazy. That's what my family did. They told me I was crazy. You done got too religious. And then after your family, let's go to your friends, the people you hang with. Because all our friends ain't saved. All my friends are not saved. I've been working on them. I've been working. I try to get them saved, but everybody won't be saved. I can't, you know, but I try. I tell them about Jesus. I live the life in front of them. Every time they're in a the crunch, they call the pastor, but they still ain't saved. You know, they won't go to the quarters. You know, they want second line. They want buck jump. Then, you know, they want drink their 40s. But I try. Now, wait a minute. Is this biblical? Well, we go back to Acts 1 and 8. He said, you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the earth. Jerusalem is home. Judea is your family. Samaria, those are your enemies, the people that you don't like. And then the uttermost parts of the earth, that's when you go on the corner. So our pastor is not asking you to go on the corner. I'm asking, did you tell your Uncle Phil at the family reunion about Jesus? Because Phil needs Jesus because y'all been to five family reunions and every family reunion he bring a different woman and he always drunk. But you ain't yet talk about Jesus. I mean, what's up, Phil? What up? <laughs> but never tell him about Jesus. Uncle Phil needs Jesus bad. But nobody ever told him. But you've been commanded. Hmm. Hmm. What about your best friend you used to do dirt with? That's the ones. And when you tell them, now, now the people you did dirt with, they're going to tell you about yourself. Because I remember. <laughs> you going to tell me? You can't tell me, Jack. I, I, I know that because that's, that's how my friends was. My friend told me that I wasn't going to be saved long. When I got saved, I told him about Jesus. And he told me, you ain't going to be saved long because you like women too much. That's a, that's a direct quote. You're not going to be saved long because you like women too much and you're going to fall. Well, he didn't say women. He said something else, but that's that was the gist of it. Hmm. It is a 
a command. It is a commission. It's something that we have to do. And what's happening is the Bible says there's apostasy. Apostasy is falling away from the church, falling away from God. Well, well, we do have people that's falling away, but we don't have any new blood because nobody telling nobody about Jesus. We keeping him to ourselves. And it was never meant to keep to ourselves. Do you remember when you got saved? If you remember when you got saved, raise your hand. Just raise it right quick. Put it down. Man, I told everybody. I was running around. You need to get saved. I had to preach that. I got saved that Saturday. I had to preach that Sunday. I got in the church. I told everybody, y'all going to hell. I had to preach that Sunday morning. Y'all going to hell. You need to be saved. You need to be born again. Y'all got to be saved. Going in the ballroom preaching like I'm crazy. <laughs> Go in the pool hall, preach it like I'm crazy. You know why? Because I have been commanded. I have a passion and a command to do it. Not because I feel like it. And there's one situation. There's one situation in my life. I asked God. A friend of mine I did not witness to that I spent a lot of time with, but I never really talked the gospel. They died. And I asked God to forgive me, and I prayed that they made it to heaven because I didn't know. I would have known if I would have said something. I don't know either way, up or down. But I said nothing. Man, I still feel guilty about that. Because I'm the preacher. I'm the apostle. I'm the one that do all the teaching. And I ain't tell my friend. How many of y'all want to feel my guilt because your loved one go to hell because you didn't say anything? Your best friend goes to hell because you don't open your mouth and God has commanded you to do it. Yes, Lord. So number one, it's a command. Number two, let me give y'all number two. Number two is about, go, go back to verse, verse 20. It's in there. I see you, Jonas. Jonas. Mr. Bush done posted on Facebook. He watching. Okay, I got you. All right, I saw it on my, on my screen when it came up. All right, so number two, reason why we should witness. We should witness because God has called us to make disciples. Go to verse 19. Go ye therefore into all the world, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, Next verse, teach them to observe all things. Well, kind of, oh, go to Matthew 16. It's in Matthew. I meant Mark 16. Mark 16. Because I won't use the word disciple. And it's a reason why I won't use the disciple. Mark 16. Uh, go around verse 15. Yeah. And he said to them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believes baptized uh, shall be saved, but he that believes not shall be damned. Verse 17. These signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall cast out devils. They shall speak in new tongues. Any, come on, keep on going. And they shall take up serpents. If they drink any daily thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Last verse 19 was 19 and 20, but I need 19. So after that, the Lord has spoken to them. He was received up to heaven, sat on the right hand of God. Verse 20, last verse. And they went forth and preached everywhere. The Lord working with them, confirming the word with signs follow. All right, what I want to grab is, I want to grab the word disciple because the reason why we should witness is because we make disciples. Now, what is a disciple? A disciple, the word disciple is Matthias in the Greek. It literally means learners or pupils. So when I witness to Colleen, Colleen becomes a disciple. A disciple is one who learns. So once you get saved, you ain't supposed to know everything. I don't know what to tell people. I don't know how to tell people about Christ. You ain't supposed to know. You just got saved. You're a babe. The Bible calls you a babe in Christ. You don't know. You don't know. You don't, you don't know the first book of the Bible. You don't know the last book of the Bible. You don't know nothing about sanctification, salvation, propitiation. You know nothing. But you're now a learner. You're now in position. And the reason why we should witness is we need more pupils or more learners. Exactly. 
And the thing is, the reason why there's a falling away from the church is there are no more learners. I could, I, I could read it at home. Yes, you can, but do you understand at home? That's why he gives you pastors after his own heart. Our job is to break it down and explain it. Explain it. The old lady in New, in New Orleans used to use the word explain. That's why I say that. Explain it to you. That's what we do. But you have to be, when, when you get saved, you become a learner. But how are we going to have learners if we don't have this? There was a sermon I heard in the 80s, about 85, 86. It was called The Sin of a Dry Baptismal Pool. When the pool is dry, it's a sin because people are not being saved and discipleship has not begun. So that's why we have new members class. That's why, that, watch this. That's why I stopped preaching. Y'all think, I, I, I used to go preach. I can't preach no more. I, I was a good Baptist preacher. God is good. I could do that good stuff. But I had to stop doing it because I'm, I'm doing the good stuff and folk don't know Jack. So I had to come and start explaining and explaining everything. And so when you come, what's so funny is when I preach, I was in New Orleans, I told you about that hot box two weeks ago, and the people, was they thought they was in class. They was responding back to me, wanting to know, you know, they didn't need me to break it down more. And now y'all feel like y'all in school. Matter of fact, I remember one pastor, he didn't put pews in his church, he put desks in his church. Because you become a pupil, you become a learner. All of us, watch this, and just because I'm the teacher don't mean I'm not a learner, I'm still learning. That's what a disciple is. We, and so if we do not witness, we won't have new pupils. We won't have any learners. If we have no learners, we will never have more teachers. We was watching, Simone and I was watching um, um, Bella the other day. Yesterday, by because by, she made me stay and take care of myself. But anyway, we was watching Bella yesterday. And while we're sitting there watching it, the little girl had the boy in her room, and the mama said, we don't have boys in a room. And, and the girl says, mama, you ain't got to worry about him because he's non-binary. So Simone looked at me and said, what that mean? I said, I don't know. He, I know he a boy and she a girl. We, they know all this, but they don't know Adam. They don't know Eve. They don't know Jesus. They don't know David. They know nothing about salvation. They know nothing about the blood of Jesus, but they know what non-binary is. Some term they made up. Male and female. I ain't got no such thing as non-binary. Y'all forgive me. Y'all don't come to church. I know y'all got nephews and nieces. That's all that. Really don't make no difference. It ain't. It, but they don't know Jesus. I know. I know three or four year olds that could work your iPhone better than you. But they don't know Jesus. They're not learners. And I was laughing. I'm, I'm, I'm using Colleen for example. I'm, I'm, I was thinking about this when I, when I was preparing. My first teacher in church was Colleen. She was my nursery school, Sunday school teacher. You remember them Sunday school books? Nursery, the primary class had the big book. And then you had, they taught the lesson and then you colored. Hated to leave Colleen class because I couldn't color no more. Because when you get to the junior class, there ain't no more coloring. You got to learn. <laughs> I was learning in Colleen class. I wanted to be with the big boys, but when I got with the big boys, I was like, they but I was learning. You, they, they were teaching you. They had, they had Jesus walking on the water. And Colleen would say, color the water. What color the water? The children say blue. Color. And what, what Jesus doing? He walking on the water. And who that's down underneath the water? Peter. He done fell because he didn't have faith. Te learners. Amen. But we cannot teach if nobody's saved. Yeah. If we do not witness, who will learn? Hmm. 
If we do not witness, who will learn? I'm going to say it one more time. If we do not witness, disciples. Discipleship means to reproduce yourself. Jesus says, follow me and I will make you fishers of men, Matthew 4 and 19. Go to 2 Timothy, one more verse, and then I'm going to go to my last two points and be done. 2 Timothy, this is one of my favorite verses, 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 2, when it talks about discipleship. And you might not see discipleship in it, but I want you to see it. This is Paul talking to Timothy. He said, the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, stuff you heard, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Y'all missed it. What you learned, now you teach to other men. But I can't teach other men if other men not saved. How, how you going to teach a man responsibility for his wife, his home, and his family if he don't know Jesus? I, I got one woman, she came... This was years ago. This ain't none of y'all here. Y'all might think like this, but this ain't none of y'all. A woman came and said, Pastor, I need you to train him. I said, for what? She said, she said, because the Bible says. <laughs> she started talking about what the Bible says about um, um, husbands loving your wife as, as Christ loved the church. And he don't love me like that. He won't, he not willing to lay down his life for me. Now she ain't never go to verse 22, submit. But that ain't what I want, that ain't what I want to say. That is not what I want to say. This is what I want to say. They were shacking. Y'all missed it. Oh, shacking mean they were living together in the same shack, but not married. No, no commitment. So if, watch this, that verse about the husband laying down his life means he got a ring. If I ain't got a ring, I ain't got to do nothing for you, according to the Bible. So she was trying to apply biblical rules to a non-biblical situation. Oh, y'all don't want to play with me up in here. We need disciples. This stuff has to be taught. Men have to be taught how to love their wives and take, but you gotta be saved. If you ain't saved, man, I gotta take care of myself. I, this is about the street. I gotta do what I gotta do. I gotta survive. What? But when you get saved and you have the love of God in your heart, the love of God make you, man, babe, you just take it. You just, I don't worry about myself. I'm, I'm gonna be all right. You, you gonna be good. You don't hear no non-saved men say, saved men be like that. Just, it's good. Just do what you got to do. Save me. Babe, I'm sorry. I wish I could do this. I can't do it. If you ain't saved, you ain't sorry about nothing. you like, you better do the best you can. Don't you see me working every day? And then you won't bother me while I'm taking my, my, my beer and my drink? And you're sad because I smoke blunts? I got to smoke blunts. I live with you. Now I'm saved. I had one girl came to me, just, just about weed smoke. She said she didn't know she could live without smoking weed. She a preacher now. Because she said it was the weed. She said she felt the weed was kept, was kept her going because her life was so chaotic. But not till she got saved and she became a learner. That Jesus said, I'll keep you in perfect peace if you keep your mind. So we should be Witnesses so that we can get more disciples. I, all right, I ain't gonna get to the last point. I'm gonna get to this third point because I gotta get to this point. I got 15 minutes and I need to do this point. You must witness because you love unsaved people. How many of y'all love unsaved people? <laughs> all right, Matthew 22. Let's work this. Verse 37. Matthew 22, 37. Let's work this. Uh, 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 uh. There you go. 
Jesus said to them, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. Verse 28, this is the first and great commandment. 39, the second is like it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Stop right there. So we have to love our neighbors. Question, who is your neighbor? Everybody look left. <laughs> you ain't got nobody left. Everybody look right. <laughs> you ain't got nobody right. Okay, that's your neighbor. Yes. Whether they saved or unsaved, it is our responsibility to love these people. And watch this. We should witness because we want our neighbors saved. How many of y'all want y'all friends going to hell? Y'all family members, your mamas and your dads going to hell. Somebody, when I buried my dad, I bought, you know, we brought him to, to the cemetery. And one of my members, she meant, well, um, I did everything except the committal. I did the whole funeral and everything. I didn't do the communal. And after the committal, I was walking to the car. And one of my members came up to me. She said, you're going to be here every day crying. I said, what? She said, yeah, you're going to cry every day. You got you to go through this. I said, praise the Lord. For some reason, I, you know, when we do funerals and stuff in the graveyard, I go look at the little thing and stuff in the area because that's that's the same area my mama gonna be in, and you know, my Auntie Vaughn in the area. So I just walk in the airport. I ain't worried about the grave because I know he saved. Y'all missing it. I, I don't think I know you know you know why I know. Y'all to West Wheaton, and we talked about Jesus. Yeah. Amen. And after that conversation, I'm good. Yeah. So I'm not looking for him in the graveyard. Yeah. I'm looking for him when the trumpet sounds. Yeah. But if he wasn't saved. I should have wanted him saved because what? I loved him. Right. How many of y'all loved ones are going to hell? Galatians 5 and 13, I want to read this verse to you. It says, for brethren, ye have been called unto freedom. Only use not freedom for an occasion of the flesh, but by love serve one another. He says we should Serve one another by love. And watch this. It don't make no difference how good a person is, how bad a person is, how corrupt they are. We should love them enough that we want them to go to, go, go to heaven. Okay, let's talk about the people that treated you bad. How many of y'all pray for y'all enemies? How many of y'all treat your enemies with love and respect and, and, and witness to them? You know how hard that is? That is very difficult. But that's how we're that, that's what we do. We should love them. Why? Okay, here we go. John 3.16, for God, in spite of how messed up we are, he loved us. And we're supposed to love like God. That he gave his son. Why did he give his son? That whosoever believed in him should not perish so people won't go to hell. So he loved people enough to give his son. What about you? Do you love him enough to just tell him about Christ? Do you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Are you born again? Please, listen, come to church with me. Just come one Sunday. You know, I remember I remember Miss Bobby, um, one of our members, bringing the communion today. Miss um, Bobby, on Mother's Day, she would tell her kids, don't buy me nothing. I don't need dinner. I need everybody to come to church. <laughs> that's all she wanted. And that's all she wants now. So on Mother's Day, you'll see one of her grandchildren or something just come in church. And y'all like, oh, how you been? What you doing? They here. Because even though she's still in the bed, in the nursing facility, her desire is for them to be saved because she loves them. Romans 5 and 8, but God committed his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died. Yes, 
Let me see how much time I got. I got 10 minutes. Don't be taking my time. I heard your mama. I heard you. I got 10 minutes. I'm going to take my 10 minutes. I, I want to I wanna at least start this point. I want to start this last point because it's, it's only four points. I told you it took me 30 minutes at home. I want to start this point. The reason why we should witness is we should want to keep people out of hell. Let's go to 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. I'm going to start this. I'll finish it next time. Timothy, take this so I can stop. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 9. So this is one of my, one of my uh, I used to teach at uh, Christian Bible College as a seminary in Keller, Louisiana. And when I used to teach at Christian Bible College, um, I used to teach doctrine. And one of the doctrines that I taught was the doctrine of election. So the Bible says that God has elect. The doctrine of election is that God picks who goes to heaven. Amen. Like in November, we have an election and we get to pick who's going to be the president. Well, God picks who goes to heaven. He elects us. So the problem with the doctrine of election, it implies that if God, it implies, it does not state that if God picks who goes to heaven, God picks who goes to hell. But he doesn't. He does. So I had the class was in an upper. At that time, Colleen was in seminary. I was teaching. We were driving together because we would come all the way um, from New Orleans East all the way to Kenner to teach the class. And she was in school. And that, that week, the class was in an uproar. They had the professors mad. They had everybody. People was doing. I had them doing all kind of studies. The whole seminary was upset because I told them, I said, when we got there, now I told you all this implied. I said, so. If God elects people to go to heaven, he elects them to go to hell. Oh, my God. Seminary just went crazy. I got, you know, Pastor Davis, he was the, he was the, uh, the dean. Keys, what you talking about? I said, just, just give me a couple of days till I finish the class. What was the class? It was Mondays and it was Monday and went. So I said, give me a day. To, I'm going to fix it. I just need them to be crazy for a while. And I left them crazy for about a week. That's what I do. I like tantalizing people. I do. It just, I don't know. It gives me joy. It must be the evil side of me anyway. <laughs> it's, anyway, it was, it was a mess. Everybody was just fussing and it was upset because the doctrine of election, it literally teaches he has his elect. So if you're going to heaven, God pick you. That's a fact. That ain't no joke. That's a fact. If you make it to heaven, you have been picked for heaven. Like, Pick, pick, pick. You ain't pick. I'm like, wait a minute. But he don't do that. He just pick, 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 and he'll skip me and go pick. Explain it based on this verse. Why? That's why I need to start it because it's too deep. Why do we need to witness? The Lord is not slack concerning his promises, as some men count slackness. But the Lord is long suffering. He puts up with us to us. Would. Watch this. Don't miss this. Not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Now, when we see that comma, not willing, that, that, that statement right there says that it is not God's desire for anybody to go to hell. So if it's not his desire, he does not pick people to go to hell. He just knows who's not going to pick him. So his picking is based on our picking. See, I didn't tantalize y'all. I explained it. I'm going to do it again. His picking is not based on us. He already knows whose heart is going to be changed. Okay. I'm going to mess with y'all. Who do you think I feel is the saddest person in Scripture? Judas is the saddest person in Scripture. The Bible says he was born for the purpose of betraying Christ. Doctrine of election. Peter got picked to be the leader of the disciples. Paul got picked to be the leader of the Gentiles. Judas, from birth, was born 
to betray Christ? Did Christ pick him to betray him? Or did he know his nature that he would betray him? He knows your nature. He knows who's going to open their heart and receive, and he knows who's not going to receive. He knows who's going to accept. He knows who's going to reject. So when we witness, we witness like God already knows who they're going to reject. God already knows who's going to accept. But it's not his desire. Watch this. It's not God's desire for Judas to go to hell. Judas picked hell. So this is what caught the person and his doctrine got messed up because he said God don't want anybody to go to hell and that's true. But that don't mean people won't go to hell. You better read Revelation 19, 20, and 21. <laughs> so the reason why we should witness is we should try to keep everybody we can out of hell. i never forget they invited me to do a, a, a young people's program. I, was, I, I had to be like 26 or 27. We went uptown to preach. Um, when I was in seminary, the, the, the man and the bursa at the seminary invited me to preach. You remember I went there and I bought the U choir. We bought about 50 kids from the U choir and they sung and God told me to preach on hell. Preaching on hell at a youth service. I think about 75 kids found Jesus that day because I was like, y'all going to hell. It was real. I'll be seriously. It was, it was crazy. The thing is, it was not God's desire. And it shouldn't be our desire. Watch this. How many of y'all say this? I'm done. They're going to do what they're going to do. I ain't telling them nothing. We said my time telling them about no Jesus. They ain't going to listen. So do you have the heart of Christ? Do you love them? Do you want to keep them out of hell? Bad enough they're going through all the stuff they're going through here and they got to go through hell. The stuff we go through here is temporary. Hell is eternal. Huh. I know they're no good and low down, but you know, let's get them saved. Maybe they could be some earthly good and then they could get to heaven. Man, I'm, I'm talking to y'all. I say, God said, we got to get back to basics. And one of the basics is we got to witness. Yes. So I'm done. Repeat after me. I'm a witness, I'm a witness for, Jesus. for Jesus. I will witness, I will witness for, Jesus. for Jesus. Father, we thank you for the word. Thank you for the opportunity. Help us to trust you obey the command to go and tell people about you. God, I, I don't understand how we've fallen so far away and we do everything and we sit down and we wait for people but God, it is your desire that we tell people, men and women, boys and girls about your goodness. And God, if there's somebody that doesn't know you today, I pray that you save them and deliver them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.